Beloved, let us express our gratitude unto the glory of heaven with loving kindness. For he has purposed us to live forever. We are the chosen people of the Most High, his elect remnant, called after his name in his image and likeness. Let us all lift our hearts in prayer. Father, as we come before you this hour, we thank you for this blessed day that you have protected us from the elements of the earth and over all disease. We thank you that you have looked after your beloved people and that we have had life and we live it more abundantly. And even as we come into thy presence in this gathering right now, Father, that we will hear yet again of your word as it is portrayed through the book of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, that all hearts to be attentive and all minds in one accord. For this word cometh from on high through your anointed vessel. And we are blessed to be privileged to be in his presence, to be called to serve, to honor and obey your anointed vessel. So now, Father, we ask that you have your way through the remainder of this service and into our hearts as you guide our minds to the revealing of the book of the Holy Prophet. Amen. We give glory and honor unto the highest power for blessing us with a holy Nabi, the founder and leader of the fourth house, the prophet and Melech Eshadar. As we come into the understanding of all that he is teaching us, beloved, as he teaches us of the Father and our predestined order to serve him, we honor and love the holy Malka, so Isaiah, the righteous covering of the Father unto his prophet. Honor is given unto the prophet, crown prince Yahiel, and to the evangelist, crown princess Eldara. And we most certainly thank the Father for the royal family of the prophet and the entire sovereign house of the realm of Tan Bet Yahweh. As we prepare for the revealing of the book of the prophet, it is with great anticipation that we sit with the highest level of expectation. For we know that not one word that proceeded out of the mouth of this holy Malachi can fall to the ground. It is a word that will be fulfilled in its entirety, speaking of those things to come as we prepare for the days ahead. We are attentive and blessed as we ride yet again, beloved, upon the wings of the Spirit through the words of life. Let us enter in. As prophesied by the Holy Melech and Prophet King on April 11th of 1999, the Holy Prophet of the Most High declared, there shall be famine and pestilence that the world has not experienced. We know of famine in various parts of the world, but there has never been a famine that has affected the entire world. The Holy Melech reminded us that the disease smallpox nearly destroyed humanity. At that time, there were those who thought that it was the prophecy of the end. It was not the end, not even the beginning of the end, the Holy Prophet shared. When diseases known as pestilence plague the world, there will be famine simultaneously, he said. It is going to come upon the world suddenly. It will not come in spells. It will come suddenly in its fullness. The holy Malachi of the realm declared, there is going to be war, and after war, famine affecting the entire earth and diseases unknown to man. The Holy Melech declared in the mid part of 1998 that there is a virus, a disease that was released that did not bloom as of yet. It will come to pass. The Most High made us aware that it would come as if it was a flu. And we see that a virus plagued China and has crossed over into the Western Hemisphere. There are cases of those who felt as though they had the common flu. And when they went to the doctor, they learned that it was a disease, a virus, 
that the doctors themselves could not cure. This is a small portion. It is just the beginning. We will see famines and spells, the holy prophet uttered. There will be new diseases. We will hear wars and rumors of wars, just as the wars of today. But be ye not troubled, for this is not the end, the holy prophet declared. It was reported during 1998 and 1999 in China that they had the influenza A H3N2 and the H1N1. And the genetic analysis revealed that the five strains isolated in 1998 were genetically closely related to the H9N2 viruses that they found that was isolated from chickens, and many of you remember. But as this prophecy was spoken in the early part of 1999, as they got toward the end of the year, there was a news article that read, and what took place was that there was an outbreak of the West Nile virus infection in the New York City area. The Holy Melech told us that it will cross over and come into the West. In late August of 1999, an unusual cluster of cases of meningocephalitis associated with muscle weakness was reported to the New York City Department of Health. Initially, this virus and the investigation suggested that it was of an abroviral cause. Active surveillance was implemented to identify patients in the hospitals with this viral disease as well as meningitis. As the report read, this outbreak of West Nile virus in the New York City metropolitan area represents the first time this virus has been detected in the Western Hemisphere. Bless the Most High, for the Holy Malachi told us that this would be coming unto the West. And we see, as was reported, that as we know, not one word can fall to the ground. But we waited with anticipation. And there yet again, man comes to learn of the things that the Holy Malachi declares. During the early morning hours of March 18th of the year 2000, the holy vessel shared that he traveled in the spirit realm and the Most High dealt with him in a series of visions, revealing things that will transpire, declaring, he beheld a new strain of bacteria of old familiarity. He heard the Most High say, malaria in a new form shall arise in Eden. A people have plotted to destroy those who are undesirable in the earth. He knew what it meant. Malaria in a new form will be released in the earth and it will cross the seas, revealing tens of thousands of people killed in Africa. Now the United States of America has malaria sealed away. It is a plot to kill millions of Edenic people in Africa because these people are undesirable in another nation's eye. This form of malaria is a new strain, the Holy Prophet said, more potent than when malaria was first revealed. People are going to die by the 10,000. And as this was reported March 18th of the year 2000, the following year, the Joint World Health Organization and the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, they filed a report that showed that the number of deaths in the year 2000 was about 839,000 from malaria. 839,000, of which approximately 750,000 were on the African continent. Today, Africa still maintains 90% of the deaths by malaria, just as the Holy Malachi revealed unto us. It was a plot, and this plot is being carried out 
as the African continent is found right now to possess more than 90% of all cases of malaria. Bless the Most High for this word. As the Holy Melech journeyed in the presence of the Most High on December 16th of 2000, at the breaking of the day, he was resting in his chamber as he lay upon his side. And opening his eyes, he beheld something peculiar moving on the wall. Knowing he was in a deep vision and not asleep, the Holy Prophet decided to depart the vision. He felt his eyelids open and move, raising his head, yet between the realms. He observed this entity moving, having life. It was something never seen before. A new strain of virus declared the Most High to him. A new strain of virus has entered the earth's realm as the prophet beheld it moving on the wall. It appeared likened unto an oval, banana type shape with several of them joined. A bacteria joined together, moving like into one body. It was moving on the wall. It was frightening to behold. The horse showed unto his son, this new strain of virus is worse than the new strain of malaria that is coming. The Almighty said, it shall kill tens of thousands. As he showed his holy prophet, how it would come, declaring, it lives in the water and it has not multiplied yet into the majority. Bless the Most High. On September 8th of the year 2000, and two, the Holy Nabi proclaimed the following. There shall be great plagues in the earth, Plagues once known and subdued shall resurface, and plagues of a peculiar sort shall come upon men. The Most High shall even begin his judgment in the house that calls itself by his name. And as he continued in the utterance, the prophet of light on July 6 of 2003, the Most High appeared to his holy prophet two weeks ago, and at that time the prophet Shofet was present. The Holy Nabi shared with him how the highest power came to him in the dealings, and he was between the corridors of time in his dwelling place of the sage. As he arrived inside his chamber, there he began to speak unto the covering of Yahweh, his blessed part. The Most High moved and caused him to ascend out of his chamber into another dimension. As the Father called him, it was as if he moved in a train, not a locomotive made by man, a train that was the train of the Most High traveling in time. The glory of heaven revealed unto him what appeared to be a window. The prophet stood back observing two other windows, one next to the other. The highest power allows him to glaze into the first window, the opening of it. And as he looked, he saw a time coming of great trouble. He viewed the air full of poison, and men, as he beheld, walk in what appeared to be a special mass like an unto, a gas mass. He observed a haze that filled the sky as a veil. It was a troubling time, and he beheld multitudes of people stricken with disease. He saw boils upon their flesh as it burned them. Many could not receive medical attention because what they had was untreatable, and there were few that could provide for them. The Most High transcended his holy prophet as he walked amongst the people and no harm came to him. It baffled those that were stricken with disease, ailments, and boils. They did nothing about it only because they were distracted by their pains. The Most High proclaimed unto his prophet, as he further observed, If you continue, ye shall see greater war. 
So the holy prophet glimpsed. He did not tarry to look. He glimpsed. He watched a woman eating her own flesh as she put her mouth to her arm. When he saw this thing, it troubled him. At first, he thought what he beheld was the arm of another person. If that was what he beheld, then that would be able to explain famine. But what he saw was not the arm of another person, but it was that she was eating her own arm. And that explains, as the Holy Prophet told us, twofold, famine and pestilence. Her body was wrapped with what appeared to be boils, and her arms appeared as if it was decaying, causing great pain. She attempted to bite off her arm and satisfy her body at the same time. The holy Melek could not look anymore, declaring, Most High, no more. Oh, beloved. As we continue to share the revealing of what shall surely come upon mankind, let us hear the word of the Most High as it was conveyed to his holy Melek on April 6 of 2007. The voice of Yahweh declared, there are coming great diseases and they will be seen in the 21st century. These diseases are going to shock scientists and doctors are not going to have a cure. They're going to have to create names for these diseases because they will not know what to call them. It will not be that they are unfamiliar diseases, but that these diseases have mutated. The Holy Prophet continues utterance, there will be strains of bacteria and disease that once plagued the earth and have taken on a new form and a new strain. Doctors will not be able to supply vaccinations to fight off these type of diseases because they will mutate into degrees and levels that man cannot combat. And as the holy Malachi continued to prepare us for the diseases that will come and plague the earth, the voice of the Most High shared again on August 17th of 2012. He said, the year 2013, it is the time of transition as the highest power declared several years ago. He warns us again as he speaks concerning plagues, viruses, and diseases, even those that are man-made. The year 2013 will begin the release of new viruses in the earth by man. The Holy Nabi heard the word experiment. Yahweh said, experiment, not to drastically alarm the civilians, but just enough that they may observe its effect upon the civilians. The Almighty took his realm son into this revealing just two days before. Instructions was given to us not to be outside unnecessarily. And if you are in transition, to keep your windows closed. The Holy Prophet declared, I trust you did so when the instructions were given. Because in exercising it, it shows your obedience. That when the day comes of true alarm, you will respond immediately. This year, there has been an increase in a virus that is transmitted by mosquitoes, the Holy Prophet said. It is a form of the West Nile virus. The Most High took his prophet into this. The Holy Melech declared, I prophesied at least eight years ago, in the year 2004, of drought periodically. And since that prophecy went forth, we have been in drought. Yet, the prophecy says, and the prophet continues, there will be mosquitoes and they will be released with this virus. We know that mosquitoes need water to breathe, he says. But yet, in spite of the drought, you will see the mosquitoes come forth and they will be released with this virus. The Holy Nabi continued, now it is an epidemic in Texas, more than any other state, to the point that they are on high alert. 
all of it was planned so that they could begin to implement trials and tests to see the response of civilians. This was the reason. Now they're continuing their plans, spraying by way of airplanes, a pesticide that they claim will not harm other insects or nature itself. The fact of the matter is this pesticide is going to affect people's body. Therefore, the Holy Malachi said, during certain hours of the night, the people of the Most High cannot be outside. When you depart your home in the morning, get inside your vehicle immediately. And when it rains, do not let the rain fall upon you, as the Almighty showed this unto his holy prophet. We have begun this transition for the elect of the Most High in its year, it is already the year 2013, the Holy Nabi said, for the new year came in during the month of Abib. This is how we celebrate the new year. The Holy Nabi uttered, thus transitions are happening already, and the people of the Almighty must be on high alert. Beloved, as this prophecy went forth, and many of you will remember at nights, you'd hear the planes overhead that were out spraying. And if many of you remember the mosquitoes, and you will recall, they appeared to be larger than normal mosquitoes. On June 10th of 2014, the Dallas Observer reported the Texas drought is producing bigger, stronger, meaner mosquitoes. The Texas drought is historic, the report read. But according to researchers at UNT Health Centers in Fort Worth, the mosquitoes that could survive to be bigger, meaner, and more persistent. Mosquitoes grow in stagnant water. If there are fewer mosquitoes, there are more nutrients to go around, the doctor said. That may result in larger mosquitoes being able to carry the virus. Normal mosquitoes can live up to 20 days, as they went on. But these stronger mosquitoes can live up to one month. They can also cover more territory. More important, they have added strength. Longer life expectancy and a greater range means that these mosquitoes have more time to pass on the West Nile virus, Dr. Lee said. The West Nile virus first reared its head in Texas in the year 2002, and a state emergency was declared two summers ago in 2012. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention found that nearly half of all cases in Texas occurred in four counties around Dallas, Fort Worth. And the report went on to mention how at the time the trucks went around spray, spraying during the day, airplanes at night, they claimed that 400 people were infected and 20 people had died. But these are the numbers that they had claimed. But we were prepared, beloved, ahead of time. For the Most High spoke the word that these mosquitoes would be present, spreading the West Nile virus in spite of the drought. It's bless the Most High. As we continue to look into the word that was revealed, we see that Very Well Health has reported that there's a reemerging of diseases where some are saying or calling it a comeback. In the past century or so, man has fought and has overcome its fair share of battles with disease, as this report says. Vaccines defeated smallpox, antibiotics conquered scarlet fever, and an insecticide scaled back mosquito-borne il illnesses. But despite these successes, some diseases appear to be making a comeback. Outbreaks of measles and mumps had made more than a few headlines of late. And while the reasons behind the rise and fall of disease are often complex and difficult to pin down, 
here are just a few of the key reasons behind some of these resurgences. Measles is one of the most contagious diseases. And officially it was declared eliminated in the United States in the year 2000. But since then, dozens of outbreaks and thousands of cases have been reported. And of recent, as this was reported June of 2020, there was a large outbreak of measles involving Disneyland that led to more than 300 cases in the United States and Canada. Measles is not the only vaccine preventable disease that is seeing a resurgence, the report goes on. There's been cases of pertussis and mumps that have been also on the rise. And what they're saying is that it's insufficient to say that the vaccines are waning off the immunity. Vaccines work by training your body to fight a particular pathogen, like a virus, bacteria, or toxin. The immune system creates antibodies to fight off the vaccine and then stores away the info in case they come in contact with the disease in the future. It is a powerful tool, but it's not like flipping a switch, the report said. Vaccines do not guarantee immediate or lifelong immunity. And what they are finding is that over the course of time, the body forgets how to make these antibodies. And therefore, they're not in a position to be able to ward off the diseases, as well as the fact that now these are new diseases, mutate diseases, as the Holy Malachi has declared. And as the word of the Holy Malachi has gone forth, we see the resurgence of these diseases in the earth with the return of some that were familiar and others that will mutate from diseases of the past. While many will be found unprepared, the Most High will always make a way for his people. We are continually admonished, beloved, to rehearse the word and to allow our bodies to be the recipient of the source of life in order that we may live. The life recipe was divinely inspired by the Father and given to us in the year 2008 to preserve the body and prepare it for the days when disease and pestilence will ravage the earth. The life recipe was not only directed and executed through expression, but by the holy vessel of the Most High, it was mandated as a way of preserving life. The implementation of the life recipe was and is to regulate our bodies, bringing it into homeostasis and restoration. We are taught concerning the importance of phytonutrients, which are found in dark green leafy vegetables. And when we consume these vegetables, we also receive the benefits of the minerals and other nutritional properties which keep viruses and diseases from affecting our body. Instructions were further given to the parents and their children to be vigilant in washing their hands and maintaining cleanliness at all times, as the Holy Prophet revealed unto the people of Yahweh regarding a new living bacteria, a virus, which will be transmitted to children. The Prophet of Light declared, this attack will try and come to the children of the elect remnant. But bless the Father, bless him that as we remain vigilant, we can ward off these diseases only through obedience in following the word that has been uttered unto us. The Most High showed his prophet on December 21st, of the year 2012 that one of the major ways man is going to usher in their new law and what this government is plotting to do is through diseases the highest power admonished through his anointed vessel that if we do not have to be amongst crowds do not 
because they will release bacteria and disease in their midst. There's going to be an epidemic, not just in this country, but in the world. And a large population of those in the earth will be killed because of these diseases. You cannot wait until that time comes, the Holy Prophet said, for your body must be regulated by the authority of the word of the kingdom. At that time, you cannot just begin to speak the word. You should already be conformed to the word that was spoken from now. The Holy Malachi told us, and he brought to our attention, why the U.S. and Russia have deadly diseases under quarantine. The purpose is not only to study it, but to enclose it in the head of a missile. We are told that wars will come, and during this high-tech age, it will not only be nuclear missiles, but it will also be fought with germ and chemical warfare. We continue to look at the word of the Most High and Fold. It was on July 22nd of the year 2019 that the conservation.com reported the U.S. has a history of testing biological weapons on the public. The U.S. Biological Weapons Program started during World War II, but the first real public test didn't happen until 1949 when scientists put harmless bacteria in the air conditioning system at the Pentagon to see what a biological weapon might look like. A year later, the U.S. Navy carried out Operation Sea Spray. The coast of San Francisco and California was sprayed with two types of bacteria. These bacteria are supposed to be safe. But Bacillus globigii, which is now listed as one of those two bacteria, is found to be a pathogen causing food poisoning and can hurt anyone with a weak immune system. In 1941, tests were also carried out at the Norfolk Naval Supply Center in Virginia, and this is a massive supply center for the U.S. Navy. Fungal spores were dispersed to see how they would affect workers unpacking crates there. Most of the workers were African American and the scientists wanted to test a theory that they were more success susceptible to fungal disease than Caucasian. This test was done deliberately there was a massive increase in testing in 1962 when the U.S. Secretary of Defense at the time, Robert McNamara, authorized Project 112. The project expanded bioweapons testing and pumped new funds into research. One of the more controversial tests actually took place in 1966 in New York City in the subways. They placed this pathogen inside light bulbs, and then they went into the subways and they smashed these light bulbs on the tracks. The bacteria traveled for miles around the subway system, being breathed by thousands of civilians and covering their clothes. And it was so bad that in 2008, more than 20 years later, the U.S. Government Office of Accountability has acknowledged that tens of thousands of civilians might have been exposed to these biological agents thanks to Project 112 and the other tests. They are still attempting to track them. As the Prophet of the Most High has told us that they are using these diseases, the United States and Russia, mainly, to be put into missile heads, 
that'll be used during times of war. But let us further look at the seriousness of this bio-warfare program. It's reported in February 26 of this year, 2020, the U.S. bio-warfare programs have 13,000 death scientists hard at work. The American Legal Authority, who in 1989 drafted the law that Congress enacted that's supposed to compel biological weapons during the convention, this professor was the main architect of the laws and that convention. He states that since September 11th, we have spent somewhere in the area of $100 billion on offensive biological warfare. Professor Boyle estimated that there are 13,000 what he calls death scientists in 400 laboratories in the U.S. and abroad who they are employed to make new strains of offensive killer germs that would be resistant to vaccines. For example, Dr. Kawakawa from the University of Wisconsin, he found a way to increase the toxicity of the flu virus by 200 times. This is the same scientist who resurrected the genocidal Spanish flu virus for the pathogen for offensive biowarfare purposes. This is the same professor who came up with that. As for fighting the flu, in the typical year of 2006, the U.S. spent about $120 million fighting the flu and it killed that year about 36,000 Americans. But the same institution that provided that budget of 120 million to fight the flu spent $1.6 billion for biodefense. As Boyle went on to state, he says that these Ebola vaccines that were experimental in the U.S. biowarfare were being tested out in West Africa. In West Africa, they created in Sierra Leone the Ebola pandemic. This was done through these scientists that were hired to create these viruses. He went on to say that they should shut down in Galveston what is known as the National Laboratory which is a highly contaminant research lab. For they search around the world for potential bio agents in the wild to find parts that they can make these new biological weapons. He said they should shut this plant down because they are going against what the commission and the convention was intended for. And he states that what they produce there is far more dangerous to humanity than even what they used during the time of Hitler. As he continued, he said, American universities, they have a history, a long history, for permitting this research. And these institutes have opted to allow these laboratories to continue in their universities. And they're perverted by the Pentagon and the CIA to have their scientists and their students create these viruses. And he went on with a long list of universities that allow this to happen. But the reason why they allow this to happen, beloved, in the universities, in the name of research, is that for every research grant that the universities receive, they take up to 50, 51 percent that they call operational costs out of the grant money. And the rest is actually used for the research itself. So it's been big business for them to continue. 
To get some idea of the magnitude of the U.S. biological warfare research involving deadly diseases now going forward, the federal government is said to be funding 400 laboratories globally. These labs reportedly are concocting new strains of lethal microbes for which there is no cure, just as the Holy Malachi said. He says that the biological warfare involved the use of living organisms for military purposes, such as weapons that can be used to be viral, bacterial, and fungal, among other forms. And what they found is that during the time of Reagan, he made it possible, the Pentagon, for the sale of these biological agents and poison gas to Iraq. It was given to Saddam Hussein, hoping that he would use it against Iran. And while there's been no proof to this day that it was used against Iran, they found that it actually turned back on the U.S. For when they had the Middle East War in the U.S., these biological warfare weapons that Saddam Hussein produced, thanks to Reagan, was used upon the U.S. armed forces when they invaded Iraq in 1991. And this is where you see many soldiers came back with what they call Gulf War Syndrome, because they were affected by these viruses. Besides America, there were operative biowarfare labs in the UK, in Russia, in France, China, and Israel. They say that the American pharmaceutical industry and the World Health Organization, as we've had revealed in previous prophecies, are actually dumping these dangerous vaccines presently in West Africa, where people are suffering tremendously from Ebola. And the reason why, as we know, is because the WHO, World Health Organization, is a front for Big Pharma. The main reason, as this author said, is that they want to reduce the number of blacks in West Africa through genocide. And we know that's because it's the word that was revealed as the Holy Prophet shared it with us. Presently, beloved, as we're going through this time of what they call COVID-19, and we know when it came upon us, we waited with anticipation as the Holy Malachi would explain to us, show us, what this all was and how it was revealed through the Most High. On March 13th of 2020 this year, the Holy Malak revealed, the door has been opened between the years 2012 and 2016. COVID-19 is nothing compared to what will come. It is as a breeze before a devastating tornado the Holy Malik said. As the Prophet from High was looking and traveling through the eyes of the Spirit, he saw what this was all about. This is all devised by men, he said. This is not about terrorism, but designed by scientists for the elite government, the shadow government, who really runs things. They must see how people will respond. These plagues and diseases will usher in martial law. It is to see how people will respond on a worldwide level, the Holy Malik said. It is devised to disrupt the economy and the stock market. They will take the data and move with a heavy wind, the prophet of the Most High reiterated. Sharing with us what this was all about. As we continue to see the revealings of what is taking place, as he told us that it will be greater mutations, 
as we see how the economy of the world is in turmoil, the stock market is up and down and going through some of its most difficult times. We yet see how this virus, COVID-19, is presently in its mutated state. Scientists trace more contagious COVID-19 mutation to see how it will dominate the world. This is reported in the Miami Herald on July 8th of 2020. Several times since the coronavirus began, scientists from around the world announced that they have discovered new mutations in the virus's genetic material. And this has alarmed them. Now, new research adds to the previous papers that they developed. The second, more dominant virus carrying a mutation termed D614G that appears to have made it more contagious than the coronavirus itself. Experts say it's unknown how the virus was introduced into Europe, but it's being found in Europe now, and they don't know how the travelers boarded it there or how it arrived. But now this newer version containing the D614G mutation is the main type of disease right now ravaging the world. In April, Chinese researchers said the coronavirus had already mutated into more than 30 different strains, according to their study. The group claimed that this one, the D614G, was the most infectious. Lab studies are showing that this mutated form of the virus is 10 times more infectious than the original coronavirus that was released. And it is causing a panic in the entire world. Beloved, we have been directed to cover, to protect, and to not take for granted because being people of color, we cannot assume that we are privileged to be safe. It's been said by so many different ones, the virus cannot survive in those of African descent. That was flooded through social media and there were many people of African descent who went running through the streets without covering. But as it was reported on July 14th of this year, that it's a slap in the face how racial bias right now is being found even in the US through the coronavirus response. And what this doctor has said, the reason why she's offended is that for years she has been asking for better staffing in the urban areas, more supply, and it's been totally ignored. And now suddenly with the coronavirus, there's been this quick move to try to give whatever help they could. But what she's found is that the statistics are alarming. Data from the Center for Disease Control, she says, released after the New York Times agency sued them, confirmed what many people had already known that nearly 1.5 million coronavirus patients in America at the time, that it was disproportionate in terms of the amount of Black and Latino. The Black and Latino people in America represent nearly a third of all cases and have been nearly twice as likely to die from the virus as their white counterparts. Many health experts contend that the data underscores how racial bias shapes not just policy, but also public behavior during the crisis. Not only are Black and Latino Americans more likely to lack health insurance or live in areas with quality facilities 
but they say there's an unconscious racial bias among the medical professionals itself that's contributing to this unequal health outcomes. She went on to say that what they are telling our communities is that it doesn't matter and they don't matter. But we were told that we must protect and be watchful, be vigilant. Don't just take for granted and run out and go anywhere in the streets unprotected to take this virus serious so that we won't fall into the demographics where they find that most people of African descent here in this country who don't have the means and the provision and the access, we won't find ourselves without because we have the Most High, and He has been our covering and our protection. He is the one who has prepared us for the time to come and has made us aware and vigilant. Beloved, we can see clearly that the word of the Most High reigns supreme and forever enlightens and prepares His people for what shall come to pass. We are to be vigilant in preparation and trust the Most High, for He will not forsake His people. Now more than ever, we must be watchful over our souls to protect the invested word of the kingdom, beloved, and over our bodies to protect the vessel from destruction so that the fulfillment of the return to the image and likeness of the Almighty can be achieved. And we are blessed to have a realm son prophet in the midst. My Lord. We're going to conclude in this last prophecy that was spoken unto us. And it should be not just a beacon of light, but a fire up under us that will continue us as we meet in the presence of the Most High. For the voice of the Most High revealed through his sovereign Melech on December 8th of 2018. Come, beloved, as we journey in the vision of the Most High, the Holy Malachi uttered. Behold what the Most High has said concerning his people. As the waters of the seas are heavy and roar upon the shores, know ye, my people, this I am with you the Holy Prophet proclaimed. I shall not forsake thee, nor turn my face from thee. For this be the time appointed when my prophet spoke of in times of old, yea, ancient, that I will gather thee from the four corners, and I will summon the winds to be thy wings that ye may fly. Mount up my people from the four corners and fly the holy Malachi uttered unto us. For unlike the birds that I have created, I have made thee greater. My spirit shall be thy wings, and ye shall soar. And the waters that shall come upon the shores of the earth, know ye, it shall not be the world, but it shall be me, saith the Most High. I shall crash upon the shores of the land of men, where common flesh dwell, and I shall show my mighty hand. I shall disturb this earth, saith the Most High, as spoken by his prophet. I shall bring winds that man have never heard, nor experienced in all their days. I shall bring the flood waters upon the land, and I shall eat up the land thereof with the waters of the sea. I shall diminish the land, saith the Most High. But for my people, I shall keep. I shall dry up the grains. I shall bring plagues. I shall trouble men's heart. But unto my people, I shall keep. My vision come now through the portal of my son. Yea, the mouth that stand before thee, and my voice speaketh thereof. I come into the earth now, and I trouble men. I shake the ground. But where ye stand, I shall keep still. Where ye stand, where you abide, I shall cause you to eat from my hands, 
ye shall live, saith the Most High. For I shall keep thee preserved, not with silk, not with linen, but sackcloth shall be thy garment. My body shall be thy glory. My covenant I make with thee, my people. I promise I will keep you, and my fire shall consume all. But ye shall be preserved by my fire. In the dwelling of my word, I abide if you keep my word in thee. I shall dwell in thee, my people, saith the highest power. And as the holy Melech continued, Know ye, the time draweth near, I shall trouble all men. Ye shall not be troubled if thy heart is kept in me. For in my pavilion I have gathered thee. Know and trust me that all things from the day before the world was made up until the time of provocation, all provision was made for thee, my people. Rest now in me and obey the word of my prophets as thy fathers of old disobeyed. Be not like them, but stay in my prophets. As the holy Malachi continued in the utterance of the Most High, obey them and ye shall know which be my prophets, for I shall be with them. When they utter my word, I shall come forth from their mouth and make the thing manifest. For I created them, O Israel, O mighty elect remnant, that they shall be the source a provision for thee. I come now through the vision as the mighty waters of the sea crash upon the shores. Watch me now, saith the Most High. I bring trouble in silence in the earth. This day I begin to move, and this day I make provision for thee now, spoke the highest power. Let the people of the Most High bless his mighty name. Mount up and roar unto the Most High, O righteous Judah, O righteous ones of Yasharal. Bless his mighty name, the Holy Nabi declared. And now by the meditation of our hearts, Holy One, we set now our face and mount up with joy in all things that the Most High have said. We are fulfilled in his word and are complete, for he has spoken, saith the prophet of the realm. We commence now in your presence and the power of your word, and go in thunder of thy voice. It is done, uttered. Oh, beloved, as we come into the close of this portion of the book of the Holy Malachi, we thank the Most High for all that he has said and has done. Oh, and we bless him as we take hold of this word. 